Now, Roma Wines presents... Suspense. Tonight, Roma Wines present Humphrey Bogart in Love's Lovely Counterfeit. Suspense is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Those excellent California wines that can add so much pleasantness to the way you live, to your happiness in entertaining guests, to your enjoyment of everyday meals. Yes, right now a glass full would be very pleasant as Roma Wines bring you... Suspense! This is the Man in Black, here for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California, who tonight from Hollywood bring you as star Mr. Humphrey Bogart, who is currently being seen in the Warner Brothers production To Have and Have Not. Mr. Bogart appears with us tonight in a characteristic tale by James M. Cain, the author of Double Indemnity and other noted contributions to the literature of dangerous adventure and troubled romance. And so, with love's lovely counterfeit... And with the performance of Humphrey Bogart, Roma Wines again hope to keep you in suspense. That's all right, Lefty. Open up. Oh, it's you, Ben. Come on in, Ben. Sal here yet? No, not yet, but he ought to be pretty soon. Huh? What's he got on his mind? I wouldn't know, Ben. Okay. Hey, what's that coming down the street? Oh, that must be those poor suckers of Citizens League. They're having a political parade. Yeah, there they are. You can see them through the window. That must be Jansen, huh? The guy they're running for mayor. That's right. Who's the doll riding with him? What's the matter? Don't you read the papers? <laughs> sure. Yeah, I read a little Abner. Who's that, Davy May? Her name is June Lyons. She's his new secretary or something, but everybody says she's the brains of his campaign. Yeah? I could use a little brains like that myself. <laughs> Not that kind you couldn't. Not that missionary kind. What about this Jansen? <laughs> I keep forgetting that you're new around here. Jansen doesn't have a chance. Well, he's putting out a lot of publicity. He must have some dough behind him. Yeah, but you can't elect a reform ticket in a town like this, Ben. Saul's machine is too strong, not unless you got some dirt, some real dirty dirt that smells so bad people can't ignore it. And who's going to get anything on Saul with half of the police force on his payroll? Saul isn't even worried, huh? Ah, why should he be? Saul puts up the dough, Maddox wins again, and Saul keeps on running the town. Oh, that must be Saul now. Hiya, Lefty. Hiya, Benny. Hiya. See your draft board today? Yeah, I saw him. What'd they say? Same thing. I still got that hernia from football. <laughs> that football hernia comes in pretty handy, don't it? And what's that crack supposed to mean? What's the matter, Benny? Can't you take a joke? Sure. I can take a joke. What you got on this afternoon, Benny? I guess you forgot. This is my day off. I said, what you got on this afternoon? Nothing that I can remember now. Why? Little job. What kind of a job? I got a tip. Some friends of mine may be in a little trouble. Something about a bank. Why don't you stick to the bookies and the gambling, Sal? You'd be safer. Listen, Benny. Anytime you think you're big enough to run this business, just let me know. I'll be glad to work something out for you. What's the job? These kids are, are going to crack the Castleton First National just after closing time. They got a room here in this hotel, room 480. They'll be back here about 3.30. You see, I own this hotel, and I want you to go up and collect the room rent. I'm giving them good protection, so I figure it'll come to about 20 grand. Yeah? We'll figure on getting somebody else to collect it. What? Huh? I said get somebody else. I don't like guns, and I don't like gunsels, and you know it. Listen, you punk. You think you're a big guy, don't you? A big guy with muscles, and I'm just a little guy. That's what you think, isn't it? But if you try to cross me, I'll have you crawling to me on your knees. When I get through with you, you'll, you'll, you'll beg me to use a gun on you because you're yellow, aren't you? Aren't you? What's the room number? 480. Come on, Lefty. Yeah, okay. Gee, that was lousy. 
Skipper. You're gonna do it, though, aren't you? Sure. I'll see you up there, 315. Oh, by the way, what'd you say that dame's name was? What dame? That dame with Jansen, that brains of the opposition. You mean June Lyons? Yeah, that's it. Now, wait a minute, Ben. You know that's poison. If Saul ever thought that... You know, Lefty, Miss Lyons interests me in more ways than one. <laughs> Tonight for Suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you as star Mr. Humphrey Bogart, whom you have heard in the first act of Love's Lovely Counterfeit, a radio play from the novel by James M. Kane, which is tonight's tale of suspense presented by Roma Wines. This is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines. Mention the name of Elsa Maxwell and you picture a famous hostess, expert in every phase of entertaining. Mention a meal featuring fish or fowl and Elsa Maxwell pictures, but let's hear it in her own words. The thought of a piping hot fish or chicken dinner naturally calls up for me the picture of glasses of chilled Roma Sauterne at each plate. Roma California Sauterne is delicate, pale gold in color, Delightful in bouquet and, even more important, exquisite in taste. Roma Sauterne goes perfectly with any food and tastes as good whether served in ordinary or fancy glasses. The one important thing to remember about this distinguished Sauterne is the name, Roma. Each glassful of golden Roma Sauterne reflects the heritage of all Roma wines. Choice grapes, slowly brought to perfection in fertile California's choicest vineyards, then gently pressed, then carefully guided with the ancient winemaking skill of Roma wineries to the full goodness you enjoy in every Roma wine. Roma wines do not vary, are always high in quality of bouquet, color, and flavor. Yet all this Roma wine goodness is yours for only pennies a glass. No wonder more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wines. R-O-M-A. Roma Wines. And now it is with pleasure that Roma Wines bring back to our soundstage Mr. Humphrey Bogart, who in the character of Ben Grace keeps an adventurous rendezvous in Love's Lovely Counterfeit, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Get rolling. Are you... Uh... That's right. Get rolling. So you're June Lyons, the brains of the opposition. What's this hot tip you told me about over the phone? I don't have much time. What's the matter? You worried? Not particularly. You don't have to be. I'm not interested in you. Why do you want to see Jansen elected? Suppose you let me ask the questions. All right. I'll ask you the same one. Why are you working for Johnson? I'm just one of those crazy idealists, Mm -hmm. I guess. Just a missionary, huh? Well, Jansen may not be the best man in the world, but at least he isn't hooked up with a racketeer like Saul Casper, the way Maddox is. June. Oh, it's June now, is it? What's your name? Maybe I'll tell you that later, and maybe I won't. Listen, June, if you were one of those earnest kids who stand around on street corners handing out leaflets, I might believe you wanted to reform the world, but you're not. I know that you know that electing Johnson isn't going to reform the world or even reform Lake City. It just doesn't make that much difference. Well, it does to me. But there's something else, too. Like what? If Johnson wins, of course, I'll get a city job out of it. A good one. That's more like it. But I want to explain why. You don't have to explain anything. But I want to. I'm a lawyer. At least I have a degree from law school. And I want to be a good lawyer. If you start out on your own, it can take years. But with the right job at City Hall, you can build up a practice in no time. Okay. As long as it's the dough you're thinking about, we can do business. Oh, it isn't just money. I know. Now, listen. I know. You're a missionary. <laughs> now, listen. If I, if I give you some dirt on Sal Casper that'll send him up for ten years or so, Jansen wins, right? Well, if you can prove it. You're going to prove it. 
Three punks from Chicago are sticking up the castle in First National Bank at about three this afternoon. Sal Casper's hiding them out at his hotel. Room 480. If there's any shooting at the bank and anybody gets killed, it'll be that much better. You'll have them for accessory to murder. You have your people there at four o'clock. I'll take care of the rest. Well, if we come out with this and it can't be proved, it's criminal libel. And that's all Jansen needs to really lose. So, what do you think? I think you're working for Maddox and Casper. Well, that could be. But at least I know my law. What law? The Castleton Bank is insured by the government. That makes the stick-up a federal wrap. If you want the number of the FBI, I'll give it to you. Oh. And for your information, my name is Ben Grace, and I work for Sal Casper. So, I'm not a guy who's in a very good position to go around giving phony tips to the FBI. Uh, you can pull right up here. Why are you doing this? Because I just decided Sal Casper is mean and he's greedy. Is that enough? If you say so. Room 480 at 4 o'clock. Ben. Yeah? Will I see you afterwards? Well, don't worry, baby. You'll see me. So this is room 480. Huh. Looks just like room 481. Hiya, Lefty. Uh, sit down, Ben. You uh, didn't take it too hard, what Sally said, did you? No, I can't say I liked it. What time is it? Oh, a couple of minutes to four. You know, it's too bad about you, Ben. What's too bad? That you don't like trouble. You could go a long way in this racket, Ben, because you got brains. Now, me, I don't have the brains. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't. Did I ever tell you how I started, Ben? No. I was a preacher. A what? Yep, a preacher. So help me. By rights, I still am. Look here, I got the license right here in my wallet. It uh, was one of those hillbilly outfits, and the bishop, as he called himself, was so far away from me that he never ever heard about me, I guess. Anyway, he never canceled the license. The Reverend Richard Jose Gauss. <laughs> yeah, that's one for the books, Lefty. <laughs> I was just a kid. But I got hooked up with one of those big-time evangelists. And if I'd stuck to it, I could have hit the big time myself. But you know what I did? The first time we made a really big take, I tied a handkerchief over my face, got me a rod, and stick up the cash box. <laughs> and they caught me. That's how I know I haven't got brains. I wouldn't let it worry you, Lefty. That's not what's worrying me now, Ben. Huh? What is? What's going to be happening in here in a couple of minutes? You ever sat in on a divvy before, Ben? No. I wouldn't be now, except for the manpower shortage. These are three wild kids, Ben. Chances are they'll be coked to the ears and slobbering at the mouth with being half scared to death and half crazy with excitement, thinking how much dough they got and what big, big shot public enemies they are. And we, yeah, you and me, we got to walk up and take 20 grand away from them. Mm. All right, here they are. So now we're going to find out how it's done. Hut, this is it. Get him in here. Oh, Johnny. Don't leave me. Will you, Johnny? Get him over there on the chair. Oh, Who are you? I'm the man that collects the room rent. Yeah, well, stick him up. Frisk him, Marty. Go ahead. I don't need a rod to handle punks like you. This guy's clean, Johnny. What about the other one? He's with me, and he's got a gun, and don't try to take it away from him because it's an old family heirloom, and he's fond of it. Oh, yeah? Now, stop acting like something you've seen in the movies and put that cannon away. Might drop it and break somebody's foot. Johnny! What's the matter with your pal there? He got shot. Anybody else? No. The guard uh, shot him when we were pulling out. Uh, oh, Johnny. Well, you better get him over there on the Johnny, bed. we're going too fast, Johnny. Yeah? We're going too fast. He, I'm going too fast. He's out of his head. Uh, yeah. Did you get the dough? Did we get the dough? Look at this wise guy. Forty grand, maybe more. You know how much this room is costing you? How much? Twenty grand. Twenty grand. That's right. I'll be back after a while to collect it. Uh, what are you going to do with your pal there with the hole, Johnny? Johnny? I don't know. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. You know, that's bad, don't you? Uh, Why? Uh, Kid's out of his head already. Uh, Suppose he makes trouble, starts uh, screaming or something. You got doctors, haven't you? Sure, but that kind of a doctor, that's one more guy that have to get a cut. 
Pretty soon you guys won't have anything left but small change. That's what you think. But, of course, maybe the kid will die. Yeah? And then what do we do? That's even worse. Oh, no. No, that'll be easy. We'll be seeing you. I hope you know what you're doing, Ben. I think so. Come on, I got the room next door. You know you're just as good as signing that kid's death warrant, don't you? That's right. The other two will knock him off now before we got time to do it. Now listen, I got the transom open to connecting your door. What you gonna do? Johnny? No! 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 They did it. Yeah. Maybe we better call Sal, huh? I hope you know what you're doing. Now give me Mr. Casper. Ben Gray speaking. Yes, sir. I hope you know what you're doing, Ben. Sal, this is Ben. You better, you better come up to room 480, Sal. They want to see you personally. I said they want to see you personally. Well, you want your dough or don't you? I'm not going to wrestle them for it. Okay. They'll be right up. Then what? What do you mean, then what? Ben. Yeah? If you got any little plans, you know I'm all for them, don't you? Sure. And you know I hope they come off, don't you? Sure. But if they don't come off, you know where I stand on that, too, don't you? Uh-huh. Yeah, I know. You stand right behind me with a gun in my back. Just so you know, Ben. You know, I can see how you would have made a preacher, Lefty. You've got a terrible streak of honesty in you. Just so you know, Ben. Now, listen, there he is. I'm Saul Casper. What's going on here? It's been a little trouble, Mr. Casper. What kind of trouble? Arch here. He just died. Died? He was shot. All right, so we'll get him out of here tonight. You got the dough? Sure, we got it. That's it. Here. All right, put up your hands, all of you. What is this? Department of Justice. You're all under arrest. Well, that's all, pal. Ben, where are you going? I got a date with a missionary. <laughs> Hello, baby. Where's my good evening kiss? Oh, Ben, please. I want to talk to you. What about? Don't you know? Yeah, I guess maybe I do. Oh, we can't go on like this, Ben. It isn't right. It isn't fair to Jansen. It isn't fair to... Well, it isn't fair to me. What's so unfair about it? You know what's unfair about it. Mr. Jansen promised the people of Lake City that if he got elected, he'd clean up the town. All right. Why doesn't he do it? He's had six months. Because he doesn't even know what's going on. Great. Then what's the beef? Well, I know what's going on. The horse racing places and the gambling places and all the other places are just as open as they ever were. And I know who's keeping them open. Of course you do. I am. Listen, honey, if, if I wasn't bossing the organization, someone else would be. People like to bet, people like to gamble. Oh, ben, don't you see? I'm a city official. I have an obligation to the people of this community. To the people who elected Johnson because they believed in... Still a missionary, huh? Well, I'm... I'm not a racketeer. Maybe not. But you're the next thing to it. Well, what do you mean? Well, where do you think the dough came from for that car I got you and the fur coat in this place? You never told me. Did I have to? You knew I didn't get it from a long-lost uncle. Now, why don't you admit it, baby? You're a chiseler. Am I? Sure, just like me. Only I'm honest about it. You are not. Then I will be. Starting now. Starting tonight. What are you going to do, turn me in? Oh, Ben. Maybe your big mistake was falling in love with me, baby. Now there isn't much you can do about it, is oh, there? Oh, Ben, quit it, please. Get out of it. For my sake, just, just because I don't like it. Because I hate it. Maybe I don't like it either. It's all I know how to do. What was... Hiya, Benny. <laughs> so. Surprised? Kind of. Did you break out? Yeah, just to see you, Benny. Put up your hands. Well, you know I never carry a rod. Maybe you sort of wish you did now, huh? Not that you'd have a chance to use it. What are you going to do? I'm going to kill your boyfriend, sweetheart. And when I've done that, I'll think of something real nice to do to you. Oh. You sit right there where you are, sweetheart. Benny, you start backing up to that door. Slow. That's a bathroom, isn't it? Yeah. I think I'll kill you in the bathtub, Benny. That way it'll be quiet. There won't be so much of a mess. Now... Reach behind you real careful and open a door. And when I tell you to start backing in, you back in. 
All right, start backing. Up! Up! I don't leave me down. June! Is he? Yeah. Since, since when have you been carrying a gun? Just lately. Ben, are you all right? Yeah, I, I just want to sit down. Oh, Ben! We got to get out of here, Ben. Baby. Ben, listen to me. We'll go away. We'll get out of the country. We'll go to Canada. Sure. We can get married there. You do want to marry me, don't you, Ben? No, you know I do, baby. You can join the army up there. I'll do something, too. We'll do something decent with our lives. Oh, darling, I know it's been partly my fault. I know I've been weak, but it isn't too late to begin again, is it, Don? Maybe not. But your aim on that second shot wasn't too good, baby. Ben. So there's just one thing that's stopping us. Ben, what? The bullet hole in my belly. Ah, ah. Well, hello, big shot. You've been in the land of nod, haven't you? Ah. Where am I? The city hospital. Yeah? What are you doing here? Reading the funny papers, can't you tell? Why can't you read them at home? Because there's been a little thing that we policemen call murder, big shot. You're what we call a material witness. Where's June? June Lyons. She's in a nice, cozy cell. When she comes to trial, your statement will probably send her up for five or ten years to another nice, cozy cell. What statement? Oh, you talk. Yeah? You know what you got, Big Shot? Sure. I got ventilated with a lead slug. Yeah, but that's not all. You got peritonitis. Oh, I have. So what? So, I've seen guys with peritonitis before. You know what happens? First, they start getting a fever. Then they get kind of lightheaded. Then they get thirsty. Terribly thirsty. And after a while, you get so you can make them talk without they hardly know that they're talking. Yeah, you talk, all right. You think so? I know so. Where's Lefty Gauss? You mean your faithful servant? He's right outside. Well, can I talk to him alone? Sure, why not? Hey, Putty knows your boss wants to see you. Thanks, you funny, funny fella. How you been? How you feeling? Uh, not too good. I got some plans to talk over with you, Lefty. Okay. Oh, uh, Flatfoot. Yeah, what do we have now, big shot? You say the D.A. wants me to talk, huh? Maybe he was just pretending. I well, suppose I had some conditions. Like what? Well, like I only talk in the apartment where it happened, June Lyon's apartment. June Lyons has got to be there. And Lefty here, too, to back up some things I might say. That might be arranged. You think the DA might forget a couple of those little things he's been holding against me if I talk? That would be the general idea. Okay. You can close the doors, you go out, and tell the DA to be around in about an hour. I'll talk. <laughs> What I'm saying is that I won't be responsible. Dragging a man in his condition way out here in an ambulance, lugging him up three flights of stairs on a stretcher. Well, Doc, that's the way he wanted it, and that's the way it's going to be. All right, everybody here. Miss Lyons? Yes. Lefty Gauss? Yes. How is he, Doctor? I've already told you. But he can talk. Oh, stop worrying about me, Mr. D.A. You're breaking my heart. Are you ready to start, Ben? Uh-huh. Can I have a glass of water? Yes, of course. Thanks. All right, I'm ready. <clears throat> uh, do you, do you, Ben, take this woman, June, to be thy lawful wedded wife, to love and to cherish, for better, for worse, to death do you part? What's going on here? Quiet. I do. Do you, June, take this man, Ben, to be thy lawful wedded husband, to love and to cherish, for better, for worse, to death do you part? I do. I pronounce... Oh, no, you don't. Oh, yes, I do. I'm a licensed preacher, and this is Miss June Lyon's apartment, and it's outside the city's jurisdiction. It's in the county. And this marriage license was taken out at the county courthouse one minute before they closed today. And when I sign it, brother, it's legal. I pronounce you man and wife. I suppose you've heard that a man can't 
testify against his wife, Mr. D.A. Yes, yes, I know. Oh, by the way, you mind if I kiss the bride? Oh, go ahead. Oh, ben. ben, darling. That was the finest thing. Hmm? Oh, that was nice. Ben, your face is so hot. Yeah. I, I thought maybe I, I was going to make it, baby, but I, I guess I'm not. Oh, Ben. <sighs> ben. Dr. Quick, doctor. So long, missionary. Mrs. Missionary. Oh, no. Oh, Ben. Oh, Lord, we pray thee to receive the spirit of our dearly departed and to forgive him his trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And so closes Roma Wine's presentation of Love's Lovely Counterfeit, starring Humphrey Bogart, and written by James M. Kane. Eureen Tuttle appeared as June opposite Mr. Bogart in tonight's study in Suspense. Before Mr. Humphrey Bogart returns to our microphone, this is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines. Few hostesses have entertained as extensively as often as the world-renowned hostess, Miss Elsa Maxwell. That's why these words of hers are significant. Back in the horse and buggy days, the serving of wine was surrounded by all manner of complicated do's and don'ts. Today, it's fashionable to serve delicious Roma wines whenever and however you choose. For example, the delicious, versatile Roma California Toque is a light, moderately sweet, flame-bright wine that goes well before or after meals, during the cocktail hour, actually delightful at any time. Everyone enjoys the velvety, smooth, rich flavor of Roma Toque, served cool. While Roma Toque is different in flavor from other Roma wines, it is like them in these respects. Always delicious, never varying in fine quality. And since Roma wines cost only pennies a glass... You can serve them often. Remember, more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. And the next time you use vermouth, sweet or dry, choose Roma vermouth. Zestful, full-flavored Roma vermouth is blended, mellowed and developed with all the traditional winemaking skill of the Roma wineries, yet surprisingly low-priced. Try Roma vermouth soon, won't you? This is Humphrey Bogart. It has been a great pleasure and privilege to appear for the suspense audience, and I hope they'll have me back soon. I'm certainly going to make it a point to hear next Thursday's suspense show, which sounds like one of the most unusual of the year. Two of the most distinguished ladies of the acting profession will be your stars. There's 75 years difference between their ages. They are Ms. Margaret O'Brien and Dame May Whitty. Suspense is produced, edited, and directed by William Spear. Next Thursday, same time, Roma Wines will present Dame May Whitty and Margaret O'Brien as co-stars of Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines. R-O-M-A. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.